couldn't quite quite get that measurement worked out. But later on, when we started administering the D, the DMT IV, yeah, like you said, we had a clear clear method, and it was much easier to do. Um, so so at that point, we had this open flow microperfusion, which is another benefit of the study, allows us to kind of improve recovery and. Um, with that, we were able to measure DMT under baseline conditions, and then we were able to track it throughout the entirety of the experiment after we administered it inter intravenously. Mm -hmm. And then I'm doing a screen share here. So um, we're going to be really careful to describe this verbally because most people are just listening. But what are we looking at here? How much DMT did you actually find in the prefrontal and somatosensory cortex? How did that compare to other things like serotonin and dopamine? Yeah, so it uh, pretty pretty straightforward. The the levels of DMT fell right within the range of serotonin and dopamine in both brain regions. So with the uh, the plot that we're looking at, this is um, basal concentrations of DMT in nanomolar levels, um, and it's showing serotonin, dopamine, and DMT for both brain regions, prefrontal and somatosensory cortex. And with serotonin, the the basal levels were looks like right around 0.8 nanomolar with dopamine right around 0.4 nanomolar, and then DMT fell right within that range, uh, about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 nanomolar in the prefrontal cortex. And then pretty much the same trend in the somatosensory cortex too. So so this measurement, so what this is really showing us is that, and this is, is this rats or mice? I forget. Rats. So in the rat brain, in prefrontal cortex and in somatosensory cortex, you can detect DMT at levels that's comparable to two other major, major neurotransmitters in the brain. Right. And yeah. this is basal conditions. So the animals are alive, they're awake, they're not doing anything in particular. Um, you're not giving them DMT and there's sort of nothing special happening, just baseline conditions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we just, we just keep them awake. Like you said, yeah, they're alive. Um, we just don't allow them to sleep and yeah, just the baseline conditions. So this is actually, um, I, I think it's one of the, one of the bigger findings of the, uh, of this work. But it's it's basically just um, supporting what was shown in the previous paper. So mm -hmm. it's already been shown by right. by John Dean's work that DMT is level is present uh, in the brain at about those levels. One of the differences is that uh, John Dean and the others they were measuring an occipital cortex. This is in both frontal and uh, sensory cortex, uh, which is the first measurement in those brain regions. Yeah, and I mean this would imply that, um, I mean, like plausibly, it's just found throughout cortex. Right. Yeah. And this would, this would support the, the work from, from John Dean showing that INMT is expressed widely throughout the cortex too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, the next figure, I'll put this up on the screen as well. Um, this is going to be an experiment where you're actually now giving animals IV DMT and you're looking at uh, DMT levels uh, across time. So it looks like you use three different doses and I'm hoping you can just unpack this result for people. Yeah, so we're giving uh, three, three different doses here, and the low dose was 0 0.75 mix per kg, milligrams per kilogram. Medium dose was 3.75 milligrams per kilogram. High dose was 7.5. Um, and what we did is uh, I mentioned previously that we were measuring the DMT in these 12 and a half minute epics. Uh, so it takes 12 and a half minutes to collect one sample. And the first four samples are baseline, so just uh, basal conditions. And then the next seven samples are drug conditions. So the DMT is administered at the beginning of the, of the fifth sample. And it's just a five minute bolus infusion uh, intravenously into the jugular vein. And uh, we measure the DMT in that first sample there and then all of the additional samples following that. I and see. yeah. So each of these data points is about 12 and a half minutes of time. Um, 12 and a half minutes, but it's, uh, there's, uh, a, a number of different rats for each data point, obviously too. Yep. So. Yep. Okay. All average together. And we're looking at, in this case, we're looking at DMT levels at each point in time, each 12 and a half minute chunk average across, uh, multiple animals. We've got three different doses represented here. Talk, talk to us about what's happening here to DMT levels. And then can you, can you explain, um, that in relation to the behavioral effects and how long those last? Right. So unsurprisingly, we see this dose dependent increase in DMT levels in the brain um, because we're, we're administering it um, into, the, into the vein and then we're measuring it in the brain. You think the more DMT you give, the more you're going to be able to measure in the brain. Um, and there's a, 
there's a large and significant spike at all three doses during the drug infusion period. Uh, following that, we, we sort of group the epics into drug, post-drug and recovery. So that just to kind of make it a little bit easier, um, the post-drug encompasses the, uh, D3 through, through D5 epics. And then the recovery is just the D6 and D7, uh, epics. And there's also, um, sort of a, a dose dependent, uh, sustaining of the levels of, of DMT in the brain where at the, at the low dose during the, the final three epics and in the recovery period, we see that the DMT levels go back to basal conditions. So they're no different from the baseline conditions, but in the medium and high doses, those levels of DMT remain significantly elevated from the basal conditions. And this is true in both the prefrontal and the somatosensory cortex. And this is, uh, this is interesting because uh, if we say each, each epic is about 12 and a half minutes and the DMT was administered here at, at D1 or at the first, first drug epic, there's seven epics there times 12 and a half minutes. That's uh, 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 maybe about an hour and a half. And that, that indicates that when DMT is administered intravenously, uh, 90 minutes later or more, we can still detect high, significantly elevated levels of DMT in the brain. And this is interesting, I think, because this is not the trend you would see if you were measuring DMT in the blood. Uh, if you administered DMT, into, like this, this is the way that it's done in, in the human studies, you administer DMT uh, into the vein, and then you're also measuring the DMT from circulation as well. And you see that uh, DMT is, is, is cleared from the blood much faster than it is from uh, what, what we see here in the brain. And that suggests that there could be some potential storage or sequestration mechanism uh, in the brain that's allowing the DMT to remain uh, significantly concentrated there for, yeah. uh, for a prolonged period of time. I see. So it doesn't prove this, but it suggests the possibility that there's some way to store DMT in the brain for extended periods of time. Right. Yeah. Because, because this is not what you would expect if you were measuring DMT in, in the mm -hmm. plasma or in the blood. Yeah, it would it would spike and then drop off much more quickly, probably within these first two time points, right? Right, exactly. And okay, interesting. How long? So if you're just assessing the animals behaviorally, so let's say you're looking at the classic head twitch response in animals, which is our proxy for hallucinogenic effects. What would that look like in comparison to this? So, so for example, at you know D three, D four, D five. Um, especially the higher doses, you've still got elevated DMT levels in the brain of these rats. Do they look behaviorally normal at that point, or do they still have a head twitch response or other indications that they are tripping basically? Right. So the, yeah, thanks for bringing that back up. The, the behavioral response was, was also dose dependent. And I think, I think what, I think what I wrote in the results was that uh, with, with the low dose, the, the behavioral effects last approximately 10 to 15 minutes, medium dose, um, maybe 15 to 25 minutes, and then the high dose, you know, up to 35 or 40 minutes. And the head twitch response is actually a very, very acute response. It, it happens mm. in the first uh, 10 minutes uh, from the start of DMT administration to uh, 10 minutes after that. After that, you, you won't see you won't see any head twitch. So they all occur in that in that D1 period there. I see. So the, the classic head twitch response that people use to assess something's hallucinogenic uh, potential, that would all be occurring in this first 12 and a half minute D1 time period here. Do the, what, do, the other, do the animals do any other behaviors that indicate that they're having a drug effect after that time point? Yeah. So those are the, those are the dose dependent effects that I just described, the, the, the different durations there. Um, 